And so one thing I'm hoping you guys do is that you'll actually go back and read the material about, you know, some of this stuff, because, um, you know, if this is a language you're going to be using in life, then, you know, you should know more about it and not necessarily feel like your understanding should hinge on homework or, you know, whether or not I'm taking points out of your grade, that wouldn't be a good thing. Um, so I'm hoping people will not look at it from that direction. So now let me get to a uh, recording as well on my, my own case. All right, here we go. So just gonna start out with, uh, we'll do like a, a uh, we're going to do like a 15 minute run, I guess, and then pause for some answers. Now, if you got some serious, serious questions, um, make sure that what you do is that you um, definitely put them into, a, you know, the chat box and message me with it. And I'll try to like, you know, look to see if really if anything is wrong, you know. Um, so Last week we talked about inheritance and inheritance is like a story unto itself. So you have to like really take things from the bottom up and really get from the general cases into the particular cases, right? That's what we wanna do. So here's what we have. Um, given that there is a, an Oracle tutorial formerly known as the Sun tutorials, but we have an Oracle tutorial Here's the best way into the subject. So remember I said that Java, everything is supposed to be object oriented or normally I use a different type of terminology. I say everything is class-based, right? So if we have Java source files, we then compile them with Java C and we get .class files. And remember how I told you previously that if you have source files and they have more than one class de uh, definition, then at the time when you compile that source file, we'll actually get more than one class file. Each one is going to be specific to the name of a class definition, all right? So now last week I showed you objects and objects are basically user-defined types. In many cases, objects are gonna be more complex than primitive data, all right? So they're gonna be multifaceted as opposed to what we normally have in variables, which are usually scalar, right? Um, another thing is that an object will have an underlying definition, and that underlying definition is the class itself. So the class serves as like a blueprint or a recipe for how it was meant to work, and it gives you a schematic for the objects that will be created. Each and every last one of them will have those characteristics or attributes in common. Now let's not get it twisted. I want to be exact about how I say this. It's not that the data will be copied over at all times, but the attributes will be long to all those different objects. So they'll always have the attributes in common, not necessarily the data that's stored in those attributes. The methods will also be in common as well. So every time we have a class, we have both data members as well as an interface to work on those data members. The interface consists of methods or what we would call in other programming languages such as C++, member functions, right? Methods are also known as functions in other languages. In certain other languages, they may also be known as things like procedures, right? But either way, they're operations that we create ourselves. So now, we've seen how an object works. We've seen how a class works. Inheritance works as follows. In the case of inheritance, we have objects that will be derived as uh, subclasses of other objects or subclasses of other classes, I should say. So the definition will be held in common up to a point. Take a look at this here illustration on what is inheritance. You see, here we have a bicycle, but we also have three different types of bikes. So if these three guys inherit from bicycle, they're all gonna have bicycle's definition as a foundation. However, 
that foundation is not necessarily the limitation of the subclass. The subclasses can have a few additional attributes. So we would expect a mountain bike to be somewhat different from your average bicycle. It is a, a bike that specif um, not specifies, but specializes in a certain type of travel, right? The mountain bike is used for more rougher terrain than the bicycle or an everyday bicycle, which we might consider to be just a, a general vehicle. In case of a road bike, you might have something else. Um, you may also have like a tandem bike, like a bicycle built for two or whatever, that type. All right, so everybody should be able to see that. If you can't, just raise your hand and I'll it, uh, blow it up a bit more. In Java, the idea of inheritance is uh, we, we manifest inheritance by way of the extends keyword. So the extends keyword gives us a relationship between this new class that we're creating and a previous class that already existed, which will be its basis, all right? So here's what that means. Let's suppose that you are um, inheriting from your parents, right? Your genetics are gonna be just like them. You might have your mother's hair or um, you might have your father's height, things of that nature. When it comes to inheritance and object-oriented programming, it's very similar. In fact, object-oriented programming was made for the case of simulating real-life objects. So objects are bound to be multifaceted. For instance, even in something simple like geometry, you're going to have uh, different types of attributes based on their analogs. So in 2D geometry, right, I'll have a square and the square has uh, four sides and those sides measure the same in length. If I take that up to a third dimensional analog, I'm gonna have a cube, right? So I'm gonna have, uh, instead of just sides, I'm gonna have actual planes and faces to the cube. One thing that stays the same, however, is that the dimensionality doesn't change. Um, or I shouldn't say the dimensionality, but the measure of the sides won't change. The dimensions have increased from two to three. All right, so this is how we handle inheritance in Java. Now, some people may have the question of how does inheritance work and what do we know that carries over to something else? Well, I'm gonna tell you a story right here. In something like say C++, and I, I believe Python may do it too, you have something called multiple inheritance. The multiple inheritance has a problem with it. In the case of multiple inheritance, what you have is something called the diamond inheritance problem. And the diamond inheritance problem is as follows. Let's suppose that we are trying to make different animals, right? And I have an animal. My animal, the first one is going to be called, uh, let's see, up top in this part of the diamond, let's suppose that this class up here, let me just blow this up so you can see it a bit better in this image. All right, so let's suppose that this top class right here is an animal, all right? And now here I have bird and here I have mammal, all right? Now, here's the interesting part. Birds are known to fly, all right? Bats are known to be mammals. So now the question is, which one does the bat behave as? Down here, class C, I try to make a class called bat. Birds are warm-blooded, so that's not a problem. However, most mammals don't fly. So I can't use the functionality in mammal as if it is entirely complete. Instead, I know that there's some additional functionality for this peculiar new object that we call a bat. So the bat for its own part it's a bird. No, it's not a bird, it's still a mammal. And so in this case, 
you're going to have a clash between more than one class because they're using different definitions, but they're also implying that by way of inheritance, this thing here is a case of this thing here. And at the same time, this thing here is a case of that one there, right? So knowing that a bat is not both a mammal and a bird, the question is, how do we handle this entire situation and resolve it without having any errors in our code or any ambiguities that would trip up, say, um, another programmer or an automated program system? So here's what you can do. Right? In C++, they use multiple inheritance. And you know the creator of C++ claims, well, you can use like a virtual function, this and the other. We're not going to say that. In Java, we have a different idea. We can only inherit once. right? So you can inherit vertically. right? But your vertical inheritance is going to be just one item per level. This guy inherits only for one superclass. This one inherits only from one superclass. And here's the super class, right? So that would be a lot like animal, cat, and tiger. In Java, we have the following idea. And in object-oriented programming in general, we also have this idea. The idea is that perhaps we can then abstract away the actual behavior and functionality from the immediate class designation. In other words, we could say that flying is an activity unto itself that can be uh, ascribed to various different types of animals, assuming that it is an animal. Also flying can be for airplanes or helicopters, right? But the important thing is that we now have the, the activity of flying all on its own. What's more is that we can describe that activity of flying without saying anything about what type of class a particular subclass will fall into if only it should fly. So another way of looking at it is follows. Remember that we had animal, and then we also have things like mammal and bird, right? Um, what we can do is we can now accommodate the bat by saying that the bat implements an interface with those particular activities that are common to a bat without saying that the bat itself is shoehorned into a particular type. So we call these things interfaces, right? Imagine that instead of having that full class definition with both member uh, data members and member functions or methods, instead we have an abstract system in which we simply describe a group of activities for a given object or a, a given group of objects. But what we won't be bothered with directly is trying to declare what type of classification that object falls into. Instead, the object for its own part will say that it engages in various different types of activities by means of a certain behavior. So if you take a look here, here we have interface bicycle. Then we also have the following. We have something called, called change cadence, right? So the wheel revolutions per minute, um, depending on you know the geometry of the wheel and how far it gets you when you pedal it, you can change the Or slower given certain types of terrain. Then you have speed up and apply brakes. Now, this happens regardless of what type of bicycle we're talking about. Instead, a bicycle object would implement this and say that it has this functionality. So now let's try it ourselves, and we're going to create an interface to get started. Here it goes. So I'm going to do a new screen share. And we're going to be working with Eclipse. Now, one thing you need to see is as follows. I'm going to come up with a new project. All right. 
And well, no, actually I won't come up with a new project. I'll do you one even better. I'm gonna come up with a new interface. Great. So now my interface is going to be the following. I am going to be adding it to um, my first objects, all right? So if I wanna add it to my first objects, I'll just draw first objects down like that, pull down its menu. And let me just take another look um, where I put my cat and my bat from. Sorry about that. It's actually in top down, so it's not in first objects, but here it goes. I'm going to put that into um, top down. All right. And this one is just going to be called movement. All right. I'm just going to finish it up like that. So now I have an interface called movement. So now that we have that, I'm gonna pause and field a few questions. All right, so I saw some questions and hands go up. Let's hear about it. Connor, your hand went up, remember? I, I did, I just, I, we couldn't have, see what you were doing. I so I put it in the chat, um, but that, that was my only question is I wanted to see the, but I understand what you did, so I'm all set, thank you. Uh, that's odd because my Eclipse share was on for quite some time. Can you see my Eclipse uh, share right now? So I can see your Eclipse, yeah, but when you uh, went to create a new interface, I didn't mm -hmm. see the pop-up that uh, allowed you, that was, you know, showing you, you know, uh, like when you pressed, uh, when you right clicked on your package, for instance. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. So let me just uh, try that one again. So here goes. Uh, by the way, any other questions? Also, um, can you allow us to uh, record? I already did. That was like a while ago, remember? Oh. I don't think I received it, that's why. Did you ask? Because yeah, people did. had their hands up. People had their hands up. Um, all right, so those who did not, uh, let's see. Yeah. There are some people already recording. That's weird. No, it, it, uh, I actually took out some time to do that. Oh. Yeah, you, you might have wanted to listen. Um, I guess that's everybody for now. All right. So now, here it goes. I'm going to do that again, and I'm going to give you a different screen share. So now, let me just, uh, let's see. OK, I got to mute everybody, because somebody is, uh, they got something going on in the background. And we're back. So I just went to another screen share. And this time I'm just gonna, gonna show you the entire desktop. It's okay. Now this time around, I'm actually gonna add in a second interface. And you'll notice that when you look at these things on the sidebar of my IDE, there's still .java files, all right? So they're different from classes in name only, you might say. But we know that we won't be creating copies of movement, right? Because it's not a class, so you don't create movement objects. You create objects that can move. So once again, going into my package, I'm gonna create another interface All right here. And I'm gonna create one called, let's see, swimming. 
All right, so now I have my swimming interface. Now. Now what I want to do is as follows. I'm going to go back into movement. And let me just, you know, say a few words about it. So I'm going to put some java.comments right here. And now if you remember what we were doing before when I told you about uh, the java.comments and about interfaces. So previously I told you about the uh, interfaces and classes having common uh, naming specifications, right? So the casing would be the same where the first letter is an uppercase and every word thereafter it starts with an uppercase letter, right? Um, so basically the way we, you know, use casing for classes, this is the same, uh, it's the same as how we do it for interfaces and vice versa. There's nothing that should be too foreign for you, all right? So now swimming is a form of movement. Swimming is how some animals travel. But not all. You know, I really want to keep this thing, um, you know, nice and condensed. So, but not all. Okay, so now here's what I can do. I'm going to say the following. So I'm going to say, let's suppose we have a method here. And the method is as follows, public. Boolean swims and swims is going to be um, basically just, just a, 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 a Boolean function that tells me if it swims or not. So swims, all right. And let me just put my method here. This will return um, either true or false, right? So what I can do is as follows. In my interface, I can still create certain types of data, but interfaces for the record do not house data regularly. This is an exception to the rule. One thing that I can put in an interface is a constant. All right, so my constant that I'm going to going to declare is as follows. It's going to be public static. And here's something you haven't seen before. This this makes it so that I cannot change the value of my uh, data member that's upcoming. Final. All right, so now we're working on a constant by way of, you know, the combination of these three keywords. And does swim. All right, and so now for a constant, remember that our casing was supposed to be all caps with underscores in between. So does or doesn't swim. All right. Now this part right here, um, one thing I can do is as follows. Since it's a uh, public static final, let me give it also a data type, Boolean. All right.
Dozer doesn't swim was created. The Boolean value, if swims does work, would be as follows. This is my default value. Just gonna say true. Let me not use caps on that, sorry. There you go. All right. So now this is going to return does or doesn't swim. Just like that. All right. So now here I have my swim function, um, public Boolean uh, swims. And here's what I need to do. I can say the following. Let's suppose that I do want to make sure that this has a method body in it. Then I'm gonna have to put the following in here, public Boolean. And it's also gonna have to have the following something called default. All right. But now here's what I'm going to do uh, simply because this is a commonplace uh, design to have. The commonplace design normally has us do the following. Then I say public Boolean. swims. All right, so as you can see, I have a function with no definition, just public Boolean swims. So now public Boolean swims, having no body or definition, what it has to do is as follows. It has to be defined elsewhere, somewhere else. All right. Now, other things that I can do are as follows. Um, let's suppose that I wanted to give it a default setting. Well, then in that case, um, I can either define the default here or I can implement it in a class that uses swim. So I'm just gonna put this guy in comments also. I'll just leave it here, public Boolean swims. That's for my swimming class. And for movement, I guess you could kind of figure out what's going on here. So I'm gonna say the following, public. And I'm going to say here string, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna return some sort of string, right? So public string movement. All right, and what I would like to do for this part right here is to actually add in, um, oh, I'm sorry, I should not have said movement. I should say move, moving or something like that. Um, I'll call it moves. There you go. Don't want it to look like it's a constructor. Public string moves. And so with that part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this function to say that there's a certain way that the animal moves. All right, so up here, I'm just gonna do a java.comment. Movement is for describing the general movement or a means of travel and by the way I want to change this guy down here like that 
There we go. Or a means of travel. For an animal. And I'll just put here in parentheses the following. Let me just bring some of this up. I'm trying to condense it a little. And right here in parentheses, I'm just gonna say the word object. All right, so now here's what we're discussing. We're discussing things such as uh, not just what a class or object does or how it's described, but also the manner in which it behaves. So we're separating the details of classification. We're separating that from the manner in which the object behaves, all right? And this particular specification of interfaces, it allows us to be able to uh, include the type of behavior we need without being intrusive and assuming certain types of details that could easily throw off our program or the proper understanding of what the purpose of our objects are. So we separate the classification from the uh, behavior, right, the activities. Now what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna come into movement and I'm also gonna do a, I'm gonna do a, um, a Java comment for moves. So what I want for moves to do is to take a string in All right, takes a string in. And here's how it works. I'm gonna say the following. And as you see, they didn't put the parameter there. They should have, but let me just see if they meant to do that on purpose. I hope they didn't, but it doesn't matter. There we go, parameter. So the parameter is gonna be as follows. In this case, I have M, which is the type of movement. Of the object. And I should just put here implementing object, all right? And we're going to return the following. A string that verifies the movement all right but now let's just take a look there are other things that we can do i also want to have something as follows public boolean Verify movement. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't want to say boolean, I meant to say strings. There you go, string. 
And for my string, I'm going to verify movement. All right, so let's just take a look. Coming down one. And so type of movement. And I'm just going to say here as a string literal. All right. Close that part out. And so now I have my two interfaces and I'm ready to work. Have swimming, have movement. All right, so now also let me just say the following about the function itself. So this method uh, let's see. And I want to say that it only verifies, only verifies the nature of movement. All right. Whereas this one here sets and returns. movement of object. All right. So now, have that saved. Now I'm gonna go into my animal classes and I'm just going to inherit. Here's what you need to know about inheritance in this particular case. So inheritance is going to copy over everything that was not private, all right? Here it goes. So I'm going to start a new class. And let's see. This new class can be called Penguin. And I want Penguin to have as a super class the following. It's going to inherit from animal. All right, that guy right there. Okay, so it inherits from animal, but I'm also gonna have it do the following. Let me just, you know what, I'll, I'll do it manually. I wanna do this one manually so that you can see how it works. So penguin extends animal, but at the same time it implements All right, swimming. Like that, okay. So now take a look at this error right here. You should have it on your screen as well. It says the type penguin must implement the inherited abstract method swimming dot swims, which is true. 
everything that we put in our interface was abstract, right? It describes how the interface should work as a collection of behaviors that are interrelated. However, what I don't have is anything that is overly intrusive so as to describe the manner in which it may or may not swim or move or things of that nature. So I'm gonna have to now flesh out this guy here. All right. So just gonna put my Java dot comment here for this one. So swims. allows us to verify whether the animal swims or object I can even say swims. So now here's what we do next. Once I come to Penguin, here's what we're going to know by default. You see, with Penguin, I already have things like my constructor set up. My constructor came from Animal, all right? So that's no problem. Don't need to be concerned about anything else in that particular regard. However, here's what I want to do. The first thing I'm going to get started doing is I'm going to, by way of, uh, you might say, a minimalist approach, I'm going to create that particular swimming method. All right, so this guy right here, he has to have an analog or a definition in our penguin class. So here's what it will look like once he is defined. Just gonna take him, copy that over, go into penguin. And with swims, now I'm going to give swimming a definition. This one here is going to return true. Penguin swim. All right, not rocket science. So now. Just gonna put in my java.comment for this. Mm, they didn't put in my parameters and stuff. Let me just double check, see why they didn't do that. They should have given me something, but anywho. Probably because it's a, a literal such as, you know, Boolean true, no problem. But here it goes. Um, The value for swim in penguin is obviously is obviously true by default. All right, and that's the truth. So it's obviously true by default. Now, let's suppose that I need to have a, an overall um, printing function for this. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's say the following. So up here I had swims, all right. So say this is the Boolean value for whether the animal swims. And that's the implementing animal, or implementing class.
And this is a animal object. You know, for a submarine, you wouldn't necessarily call it swimming, but it is a maritime vessel. Okay, so here I have swimming and it does like that. All right, great. Now, let's suppose I have movement. Notice that movement is actually a whole lot more general. All right, we're gonna move, uh, use movement in a little, but for now, let me just go with penguin. All right. And this is all we need to know. So here's what I'm gonna say. You come here into animal user. And I'm gonna create a new block, all right? So. Penguin, P, and let me just make sure that everybody knows that this is this is an update as of today's date is March the third. So three three twenty. 21. The reason why I'm putting that there is so that it doesn't necessarily overlap with the homework or the assignment. I don't want people to think that it's part of the assignment. So penguin P1 equals new penguin. All right. And as you already know, um, the penguin class doesn't really have a major method like that. All right, so it's just basically what I'm going to call the animal method. But now here's what else you're going to do. I could say the following. P1 dot, and let's just take a look at what we have here. You see here I have the methods that were inherited from animal, and that's nice. But I also have the Boolean method right here for swims. That was the one that was taken from our um, that was the one that was taken from our interface. So if I want to know if it swims, I'm going to say p1.swims. And I'm just going to check to see if it does. So I'm going to wrap that up in line. Okay, and apparently they overwrote my uh, P1, so I'm gonna have to put that part back in. P1.swims. And like that, we're done. All right. So I'm just gonna put another string in here. Uh, let's see, I'll say the following. True or false. I'll put that in quotes pretty soon, don't worry. True or false, the penguin swims. And let me just put some space right there. Got to format it properly. And let's see, put my new line in there. Want another new line. And I believe that's that. So we're done there. And we have some stuff that needs compiling. So we're going to build the project now. Okay, so I guess they built the whole thing. So now let's use animal user and see what we get.
True or false? A penguin swims. True. All right. Should have put a space there. No problem. So that's how we use the interface. Now I'm going to break and field some questions. All right, let's hear some questions. Um, yeah, I have a question. Sure. Um, can you go to the uh, swimming uh, interface, please? No problem. Um, here we are. So, what do you need to what see? Was, what is the difference between that, um, between what we put in, in a comment when we wrote public default boolean swims, returns, does mm -hmm. or doesn't swim? Okay, so down here, you see that there was no method body. Up here, however, because by default, an interface is only going to have uh, methods that are abstract, meaning that they'll be declared but not defined. If we wish to define them, then doing this gives us a default definition, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of like how before we had default variable. But now instead of a default variable, you actually have a default method. Like, like file. the way an animal, when we had it, when we had domesticated as default was true. Right, right. right. But in this okay. case, and then, you, and then the things that implement this would have the option of overriding it with whatever they wanted. Mm -hmm. But the difference is that you wouldn't get that error that tells you that you need to override it. Um, okay. Instead, you know, if you don't inherit and use the, or if you don't, you know, like implement that method, we'll just use the default from the actual interface. And also, um, when we wrote public Boolean swims, um, that's just, well, if it's a method, why do we have a semicolon at the end instead of brackets? Like it's a declaration. Understand. This one here? Yeah. So what, what exactly is it making? It's making a Boolean variable called swim that's just public? No, it's making a method. It's a function. So it's making a method called swims. And we're just saying that within this interface, if anybody wants to use this entire API, these are the things that will be components. The following methods will be components and-, and anything, anything that implements swim will have a method created called, called swims. Anything that uses the interface swim? Not quite, not, well, well, okay. Anything that implements, yes. It will have the interface uh, that will, you know, by default, have these different methods as its personal library, you might say. So when you implement, you then have to take those abstract methods and then give them a definition. But the good thing is that even if they're just describing like the user interface, um, you can even have some variation in the interface based off of how you define those methods or implement those methods in the class that implements the interface. I, I don't really see like why we're writing, like why would we write public Boolean swims with like nothing in it? And then in inside of Penguin, we're writing public Boolean swims returns true because if we didn't implement, if we didn't implement swimming, we would get the exact same result because we're making a Boolean method of swims that's returning true anyway. Like, mm. so, like it right here, no we don't difference. have that. We don't have that right here. Yeah, but I'm saying go to Penguin. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if we didn't implement swimming, we would have zero change because we would still be making, this would just be making a method called swims that returns true. So I don't mm. understand what the difference would be. Well, you see the difference would make more sense if the interface were even more complex, all right? So let's suppose that I had an interface of say, you know, two dimensional areas of items or three dimensional volumes of certain items. If I wanna make sure that the behavior of an object will coincide with other behaviors of similar objects or um, objects that commit similar behaviors, then I'm going to have an interface that has 
you know, the same general descriptions of traveling features, right? So what you're doing there is you're creating a user interface that not only gives you a few attributes or a few method calls, but an entire group of related methods that when put together will flesh out how to manage those details. So it's not really meant for just one piece, it's meant for multiple methods, but I'm just showing you the smallest type of uh, scenario. Now, one reason why we would, however, have that is because remember that um, bird does not normally swim. Birds fly mostly. So now how do I get that uh, extra detail in there without throwing off the definition of bird? I create an interface that says that the following activities can be integrated into that class. So now, even if I do that, I'm not gonna say how it does it. So let's suppose I had something that said flies, right? The way a bat flies and the way an insect flies and the way a bird flies could be three different things. Um, so now the flies part would be simple but the way that it flies would be something else. So I could have like a description that leads to, you know, a slightly altered interface, you know, or a slightly altered implementation of that interface. And although the action of flight is in common, the nature of how it does it is different. So, you know, you're really adding in the finer details of what the object does without classifying it again and destroying the the class definitions. Professor, could you start? Um, no, you go. I'm, I'm like, I just don't understand what mm -hmm. this, like, why um, we're putting this in when like, like the method itself, mm -hmm. the, I mean, the interface itself doesn't have anything in the method. Mm -hmm. So it, like, you're literally like typing out what the method, what the method's body is in the class. Mm -hmm. So what's the point in implementing the method if we're typing out what the what the method what the method's body is? What's the type of implementing the interface if we're still going to be typing out what the method does in the class itself? Okay, so let's 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 look at it from a different perspective. Let's suppose that um, you're actually creating a specification on how software behaves, right? Um, some of them may be proprietary, but the specification is open to be implemented by any vendor. So what you're going to have in common are things like function calls and behaviors that are associated with the exact specification. However, what you can't guarantee is that the proprietary commercial companies and the open source companies are gonna have the exact same uh, implementation, like the body part, you can't really uh, guarantee that. But what you can guarantee is that there's going to be some sort of black box interface that people who use that software know how to interact with. And then on the back end, the software designers would take over with the different types of details. So certain things that can be, this can be useful for would be things like creating a specification for an entire library, right? Um, Another thing that it can be useful for as well is um, beyond that specification, you can also do things like maintain uh, new additions to the specification, right? So that's a, a second thing that you can do. So it allows you to have that black box functionality in which you can specify a standard um, that will be used over and over again in different settings. So then, so like usually it wouldn't really be just like, if you go back to the swimming method, usually okay. we'll, it would give you, I mean, swimming class, my bad. Um, usually it, it would, it would give you all the yeah, interface. My bad. Um, usually they would give you the, uh, they would type things like the one that we put in comment instead of just like, instead of just the blank one that we have. So you can have a default. Right. Yeah, I think um, usually, usually they would it would be a default because it, that's really the purpose of it being used to have like generic default ones and then people have the options to switch them. 
Well, but there's, there's more to it than just that, though. Let's suppose that two companies implement the same function or the same interface, but one of them does more to like optimize the performance. So both of them are offering the same thing, but another one changes the implementation so that theirs works a little bit better. In that case, you can have a competitive advantage if you so, if you you know you so desire, despite the fact that you're releasing a uniform specification. Another way of looking at it is that these things also happen in software time and time again. For instance, if I do the following. Let's see what we have here. All right, let's suppose I do the following. I'm gonna say the following cc-v for my C compiler. Okay, they don't have it in there, no problem. Um, let's see, what do I have in here? Let me see if I have Ruby in here and then I'll see if I can show you. Um, all right, so in one case I have that. Okay, so that's my installation for Ruby. And if I have something like Emacs, let's see, it's not found. Let me just use Vi then. Let's see what happens. Uh, that's not what I was aiming for. Um, but here's the thing. And when you use like shell type of scripts, a lot of times they'll use the exact same handles for, um, you know, different types of um, commands, right? So you can actually have an interface in which it is well understood what you are doing um, as far as interacting with that particular software item. So things like having, here, let me see if I can pull up a few of them. Um, hmm. Take a look at the following. Let's see. Professor, could you start um, allowing the mic to be open while you're teaching? I answered that earlier. It's not a good thing because people no. then could call out while I'm trying to get to certain things. Because when, that you're way teaching, when you're teaching and you go off into your, your tangent, by time Those you finish tangents. your point and I mean, your whatever it is, by time you open up the floor to uh -huh. um, allow students to speak, mm -hmm. we're already lost for the most part. Write down the last the thing you remember, write down the last thing you remember, and then ask that in your question when we open up the whole thing. Because if a whole heap of people pull the conversation a bunch of different ways, I may not get anywhere. So that's the only thing I could do to make sure that I actually get to some sort of destination. I just, I just don't think it's beneficial for the class because most of the class is confused. Most are confused. Let's see, are they really? Um, yeah, I'm telling you. Well, let me ask them. Uh, I mean, they can speak, right? Okay, guys. So, other questions. Let's he let's hear. And you sh this is a good time for you to ask questions. What questions do you guys have? Wait, Jonathan, that's your hand up still? You meant to? Chad Lowry? I had that one before, that was from before. Okay, oh, yeah. guys, yeah. stuff you don't understand, let's hear it. Uh, I think it's pathetic. Yeah. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, sorry, man. Uh, so I was just, uh, just to get sort of the, the big picture on what the interfaces are, Mm -hmm. I think you did. I think I just, I think I kind of understood part of it when you were just describing it. But mm -hmm. from what I can tell, it's basically a way to sort of consolidate methods that are going to be used across different subclasses, but that can't be, uh, that shouldn't be put within those subclasses themselves. Is that so they correct? don't have to, they don't have to be subclasses. But here's the thing. Sure. 
Sure. When you create a class and you create an object, the object is always an instance of the class. All right. That's going to create a that's going to create a problem if we have a classes only world, right? Because then the only way I can have something like flight for bird is if I say that perhaps insects are birds, which isn't true. So you take away the actual classification of the animal or the classification of the object, and you define its behaviors separately as in add-ins, you know? So it's kind of like um, how you wouldn't confuse seasoning with actual food. It's the part you add on to change the characteristics slightly. Um, and when you, when you say add on, you're, you're referring to the functions or the methods that we're putting into these interfaces? Right, it, it's not yeah. uncommon to have different types of um, programming features when you actually after the classes are created or after the objects are created, um, literally blend in other things. Here, I'll show you a few of them. So let's suppose that it were a language like the following. Um, I believe Ruby has it. It have to like traits and mix-ins or something. There we go. So now in this particular case, let me just blow this up. In this particular case, you have a trait and it provides a set of methods that implement behavior. So it, it circumvents requiring a behavior to classify an object, right? Um, so let's see, they have an example further down. Here they have a module. Now let's just take a look at the part that is the uh, trait. So. Moving further on, they have this thing here. Now they're declaring a trait, and then they're going to declare some sort of behavior. And now here they have the actual usage. So here you have a trait that's separated from the class, all right? But notice down here, the class throws in this behavior separately, all right? So that keeps you from really contaminating um, your objects with some sort of misgiving, right? You don't assume that because of a certain um, activity taking place, perhaps in a special case, that that activity somehow is uniform to everything. So it allows you to, you know, add in a few finer details that inheritance would not allow you to add in without changing the actual behavior of the object, or I'm sorry, without changing the actual classification of the object, right? Um, so a penguin doesn't have to become an insect or a penguin doesn't have to become a fish, right? And um, an insect doesn't have to become a bird. Instead, the behaviors that are particular to it can be added in later on without doing any harm to the actual class definition. Now, if I had uh, the following, let's see. So, sorry, I just want to follow up that th mm -hmm. this has to do with interfaces in that those those methods that you don't want to have, don't, don't want to, have, you know, you have a set of methods that you don't want to have cause harm to those instances or classes that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Those you'd put those in uh, an interface. Is mm -hmm. that correct, or, is, or are we now talking about this trait thing? Uh, no, 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 no. I, the reason why I showed you the trait is to show you that these things happen in other programming languages. All right, traits are okay. not in Java. Java has interfaces. But what I, I'm saying oh, I, is that okay. traits are the same uh, in Ruby as what interfaces are to Java. Right. So these yeah. things do happen in other languages, and so. It, it makes sense that um, for various reasons, you will separate the interface or the actual behavior from the actual program. In Unix, you do it a whole lot. So if you had like C line at the command line, this is one compiler. And let's just see what the command line options are.
All right, so let's suppose I start this thing up at my compiler. And now take a look at some of the things that are held in common. First of all, you can change some of these keywords, right? To change the way the compiler behaves. But these are also keywords that are common to say something such as GCC. So if I have something like GCC at my command line, you're gonna see much of the same thing. They're basically following the same behavior, although they're two different items. So let's see. Um, and clearly this thing is huge. Let me, let's see, C98 or something like that. There you go. So you see, if I blow this thing up, you'll see that they have these command line options that are largely formatted the same way, right? And so with those formatted options, they exhibit some of the be same behaviors despite belonging to two separate offerings, right? So before you know it, you have implementations between different uh, vendors that in many cases have the same way of operating. And you usually use the same type of um, keywords to make similar behaviors happen even on different platforms. If you actually wanna know about like how interfaces can work in other types of software, something called the Unix standard. Let's see. And the thing about the standard is you have multiple operating systems that are guaranteed to behave the same exact way um, because they have the same software with the same command line options. You're sending me in circles. Um, um, if we yes. wanted to, if we wanted to read them. By the way, do you guys want to take a break? I meant yeah. to ask. All um, right. If if we wanted to read up more on interfaces, because I know reading that chapter six on mm -hmm. on classes really did help me. Like Great. I really understand it much better. But um, do you know what chapter or like in the chapter until where would be the best place to read? Okay, so let me get the let me get the book open. And let's see, I was looking at that as well. And the thing is I usually compare his treatment of it to, uh, I usually compare his treatment of it to, um, you know, what the Oracle documents say. So let me just see complete reference. There we go. All right, so here's what you're gonna to wanna to, uh, take a look at. So in his case, he discusses a lot about uh, inheritance, but he does it twice. That's what I noticed. Um, all right, so here you go. 
Um, it's going to be between seven and nine or even six, but don't, I, I think six, we're kind of past that, right? Um, so in this part here, you may have to skip one part, but the interfaces part is, you know, the part that you're pretty much asking me about. The packages part, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later when we finally get past the uh, classes and interfaces. Let me just speed this thing up by actually zooming in on where it is. So chapter nine. Right over here, let's see. So interfaces. It specifies what a class must do, but not how it does it. That's what we're saying. Um, so there is a concept of um, is a like a and has a that's what we talk about in object oriented programming and so when you have a subclass you're saying that the subclass is a case of the uh, super class but it's a more specific case however um, between the is a factor and the has a factor those things go into the class itself but when what it behaves as um, that's different. That is part of our user interface. And we usually save that for either um, the classes and methods or for an interface part that will simply go into describing the activities. So here he's using some of the grammar of the language, but you don't really need this part right here right now. And here's what he was talking, or here's what I was showing you before. So you have a class, it can extend the super class and implement an interface. So in my case, penguin extended animal and it implemented swimming. All right. Now there's gonna be some, uh, there, there are going to be certain types of uh, further details on what you can or cannot do in an interface. But right now you're doing just fine because we're just getting to the basic definition. All right, well, let's hear some more questions. I wanna hear some, well, actually, no, I'll give you, I'll give you guys a 15 minute break like I said I would. All right, um, so you just read the whole chapter nine, that should be good. Or chapter nine starting by interfaces till the end. Well, I wouldn't say all the way until the end. Um, so there are certain things, like this part about nested interfaces, I wouldn't really get into that with you today. Um, what I would recommend is as follows. Um, you should understand how to define and implement an interface, right? Uh, one okay. thing I wanted to do was with the rest of today, today's class, I wanted to talk about inheritance from one interface interface to another. Um, with Java, we only inherit for one class at a time, but with interfaces, there's not that restriction. Because remember, we're trying to avoid a compiling problem in which objects are being misclassified based off of, you know, trying to either encapsulate or inherit the wrong properties. All right, so um, if you want me, if you want to, uh, getting back to your question, let's see, I'll tell you exactly where we are. Okay. So here's what you want to do. Um, let's suppose that we're reading interfaces. You can skip nested interfaces. And you can, let's see. You can skip nested interfaces, but I imagine I won't be asking you to really um, master 
certain uh, certain characteristics until later. So I mean, you can continue reading on it, but I won't. I won't necessarily. That doesn't mean that I'm necessarily holding you to some of that more advanced information. We have to discuss it later on. Does that make sense? Like it, it's good to know ahead of time, but yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Okay, right. Because uh, reading the, the chapter on class has helped, so I just wanted to. Great. All right, thank you. No problem. Okay, everybody, so 
Okay, everybody. So I haven't forgotten about you. I'm actually working on a diagram that kind of helps explain things. Um, however, um, questions. Let's just hear some questions. Uh, hmm, no questions. Guys, how many of you get it 100%? By a show of hands, I see nobody gets it 100%. Um, let's hear some questions. I think I just need some time to look over the material to get it 100%, but I, I think I'm, I, I'm not sure if I speak for anyone else, but I, I think I'm ready to go on to the next section if that's okay. I think once once I read the textbook, I'll have a better grasp. Like I don't really have any questions. I just don't really understand it so well. All right, what doesn't click immediately? Let's hear about that. I, don't, I, I feel like it, it's really just the questions I asked, like, like conceptually, I'm just not really getting it so much, but I don't really mm -hmm. know how. Like, I don't know what questions there are in my brain. That's like, mm. I don't know. Well, okay. Well, I guess I don't really get like, I, I still don't, like I kind of get the point of it, but at the same time, I still feel like, like I still don't get why we would use it. But mm. I, feel like, I feel like that's just because I'm not really understanding it so much. Mm -hmm. I feel like reading it would just, like I was the same way with classes with me. I wasn't really understanding it, but. But you get it now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, that uh, that is progress. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. Nobody masters anything in just a couple of short moments. Um, so here's what I'm trying to do. Let me just come up with a diagram that shows you guys you know, uh, what I want you all to see. So let me do a screen share of my browser right now. I'm just gonna like drop a diagram. Somebody's in the chat, what do they have to say? Well, at least people are uh, reading the textbook and that's a good thing. Um, in most classes, I can't convince people to do that. So let's suppose that we have um, our classes and interfaces, and we'll just talk about the relationships between them, right? In Java, oh boy, get that back, there we go. In Java, you have the following. Um, if you're looking at what, yeah, everybody sees what I'm seeing. All right, great. So we have classes and we have interfaces, all right? And there are just some very basic rules that we usually follow through on. And when we follow those rules, things go pretty, pretty well. Um, so let me just blow this guy here up and I'm gonna add another label. And by adding in that other label, uh, you'll be able to see like some sort of relationship between what's going on and whatnot. All right, so let me just take that guy out. Um, let's see. There we go. And I'll just like relate the concepts to you guys. And it'll be like, you know, something to think about as you look at it when you study, because studying always helps. So just gonna change that part there. And this guy is also inherits. Inherits from, okay. 
you know, just start talking about the relationships between them. That way you know how to like build up code and understand what each of these things should look like or behave as or things like that. All right. Um, so that's inherits from there. And this one I want it to also be inherits from. So let me just copy that guy over and come in here. Right, so that inherits from, let me just pull this box open a bit more so that it can be read a bit better. All right, great. And then over here, I'm just gonna put up here the following. Uh, I'm gonna take out my other variable text and up here, I'm gonna say implements. Or maybe I should put it at the bottom. Put it here, it might help a bit more. And let me just drag these guys over a bit more. All right, so that way they look like they actually belong to these local branches. Okay, and this guy, I'm going to call him implements. You can't hear anything. Like everybody else could hear me? Oh, your speaker was off. I'm like, how come you can't hear anything? All right. Um, so now implement, I'm gonna blow this guy up. And you should know these things because the keywords are important. So that's why I'm like really taking out. I wanna take out the time to like, just make sure you have the vocabulary down. That way, you know, when you look at it a bit later, it's not like foreign or alien to you. You know what you're looking at. So here I have that right there. Okay, so um, inheriting. Inheriting, we also call in Java the following. We call it extending, all right? So let me just see if I can like make some space for the word extends. Okay, so it inherits or extends. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that um, when you guys look at it later, you can like actually hopefully read it like in plain English. That's what I'm hoping you'll do. There we go. Um, let me just put a slash there. Sorry about that. All right, so inherits or extends from that. Um, there you go. And then over here is the same deal, right? So we're also inheriting or extending. All right. Let me just squeeze that down a bit. All right, so a class inherits or extends from another class, but a class implements an interface, all right? Now, interfaces can also inherit. They can extend other interfaces. Now, I'm going to like tell you right ahead of time what the ideas behind them are and how you can like, you know, kind of relate these different terminologies together with. So with implements, implements is pretty much evident, right? But here's the rules for implementation. And I think I'll add in some links, all right? So I'm gonna put some links in.
And up here, any class can implement an interface or just subclasses, any class. You don't have to be a subclass to implement an interface. Um, so let me take this link over here and put it right up there. All right, and I want my link text. Let me just start writing this thing up. It may not go easily. All right, so I want this link right here to be the following. So I'm just gonna say one or more, or I could say any number of, any number of All right, and I'm just gonna blow this one up a bit larger. I'm gonna pull it out a bit. All right. And let me just take this font and blow that up as well. All right. So I want the font to be a bit larger. That way you guys can read it later on. There we go. And now I wanna change this link around. And with the link, I'm gonna put in the following. Um, I think this could be a good place for me to put it. Let me just double check. I don't want to like, you know, um, not give you the best possible, best possible area. Okay, so that was like the very, very bare basics. No problem. So I'm gonna then take this particular link and I'm gonna put it into our diagram. Here's the URL. Okay, and I'll apply it like that. Um, and then when you click on it, you should be able to go to the part about interfaces. Now over here, I'm gonna put in another link All right, and this part I'm going to say only one. So zero or one cases of inheritance per class. All right, and sorry about that. Moving back one, didn't mean to click that. Um, for that part right there, however, let me just first make sure that this part here is blown up so you can read it better. Let's see, can I try 18? Yes, 18 will fit. And so the part about inheriting from a class, all right? This part here, okay, so you can only inherit from one class at a time. And I will put that into my diagram right here. Okay, so when you click on that link, you'll be taken to that particular part there. Um, now let's see, I can also put another link here. Okay, and for this link, I'm gonna say any number of, because that's the truth. And interfaces can inherit from other interfaces. I'll show you in a second. All right, so this is again, any number of. All right, 
And let me just blow up the font a bit. Okay. So now we have our diagram together. And so now for this, any number of, I'm gonna give you a link to the uh, part about extending interfaces. So it may not be in this particular part right here, no problem, but I will, uh, they did have an actual part on there in the second place that I told you I would load to the Dropbox. So that other link in the Dropbox, um, you will find it there. So let me just, let's see. Let me go up one. Okay. And what I need to show you would be right. Around here. Um, interfaces and inheritance. Okay, so inheritance, this one is hopefully about interfaces, but let me just make sure that it is. There we go. All right, so if you take a look at what we have here, notice how you have public interface do it, all right? And then now suppose at a later time you want to add a third method called do it that in, so that the interface now becomes interface do it with this third method in there. Now it says the following. If you change, if you make this change that all classes that implement the old do it will have to implement the third one. So that would actually break code uh, and keep it from being backwards or forwards compatible between different releases. So in order to like try to uh, meet that challenge head on, what you would do is you would create an interface that extends the older interface, right? And you could do that any number of times with a, an extension of interfaces, right? So you could actually start to combine interface properties together. So, let me just put this particular link in. And like that. Okay, let's see what we have here. Great, um, perfect. Now what I need to do is save this. And this right here is going to be my class and interface. rules, right? So these are rules for the class and interface, right? This will do you very well. Um, let's see if I could download it as SVG.
I'll try downloading it in a couple of different formats just to see which one is the best for you guys. Okay, uh, let's see, others. Let me just change that part so that it continues to say this class interface. And if you remember these rules, it should serve you very well. Okay. So now let me just save this as well. I'll save it in a couple of different formats and then I will see which one is best to be loaded to the Dropbox. Okay. And let me just go take a look at where it is. So, going to be loading this thing up and I guess I can like also pass it off to you guys and see if you find it um, easy to use or not. Okay, so here's what I wanna pass through. I'm gonna put this in the chat, you guys. And just tell me if you guys can open it. It should open up in your browser. All right, Connor says, yep, I got it. That's cool, way cool. How about everybody else? How y'all doing? I'm gonna throw that into the Dropbox, by the way, because I really want you guys to like really reflect on it. So, it's gonna put it in 3115. This is gonna be in the in the main section. All right. Um, so don't overlook it too badly. All right, Muhammad got it too. And, and you guys opened it no problem in your browser. Yes. Cool. Uh, professor. Yes, sir. So like about the assignment, mm -hmm. are you gonna extend it? Uh, so let me just take a look at how many I got so far. Uh, let's see. I might, I might. Uh, but let me just take a look at how people are doing thus far. Um, that's that's I think that's like the best way for me to like use some sort of judgment on this. Uh, so hold on, hold on. Let me just let me just take a look. Uh, okay, so let's see. I have all right, Zara. I I gotta get you to like properly label your assignments. That way, when you get used to doing it. You know, it won't be a, it won't be something that you forget, but you know, it'll be something that you can use properly. Um, okay, so yeah, I, I can extend it. I can extend it um, a bit, but I think the only way I, uh, let's see, how many people have actually, I guess, picked up a few details on what they can do now? for the for the actual assignment. I mean, if you're better off, then, you know, I'll see like what, what the better timing is for 
Let's see, one person, just one person puts their hand up. Keep your hands up. Let me just see how many people are like actually better off. Um, geez, like four or five of you. Um, you know what? Okay, so I'll give you until. I'll give you until Friday. All right. So let's see. Um, I'll give you until Friday. I think you should be able to like really go in on it now and really make things a bit better. Right. Um, so let's just take a look. I've uploaded the uh, actual graphic like I said I would. All right. So let me just close that out and refresh this page. All right, let's see what class and inheritance looks like. All right, great. And now when you actually do download the whole thing, uh, one thing you should be able to do is work with the links. The link should take you back to where you were before or to, you know, like where you need to go to read the surrounding information. So let's suppose that I, uh, let's see. Maybe I should have imported it a little bit differently. Um, at least I thought I did that before, but either way, um, hopefully you'll be able to see what it is that you need to be looking at. All right, so if I went back to, let's see, I had opened it up in one of my browsers. I'll just open it up again and see what's going on. Excellent. All right. So take a look, everybody. I'm going to do another screen share. Here we go. Click on any number of, and that should take you to a link. All right. So now you know about uh, the implementation of interfaces. Uh, any number of here will show you the inheritance from interface to interface. And zero or one will show you inheritance from one class to another. All right. And these are the rules. So a class can inherit from at most one class. Now in Java, in the Java environment, the basic class that all objects inherit from is java.ling.object. So even if you don't declare inheritance, they all start off from there. Now, there is no base interface, all right? Um, we did interfaces today, and we talked about how you can, in, uh, how you can implement an interface, all right? But what I should tell you is that you can implement any number of them so I suppose I go back to Eclipse and I did the following. All right here I have movement. And here I have penguin. Take a look, penguin can actually, I'm sorry, uh, movement can be added in. And there you have it. So now there's two interfaces. So now if we have a very unusual object that has, you know, um, abilities that are very, very much outside of its normal um, or, or the normal class behavior, you could then take, you know, different combinations of interfaces to really add in at the time of um, whatever whatever functionality you will need. Now notice that here Penguin is not, it hasn't implemented um, movement.moves, all right? So I need to implement uh, movement and verify movement, all right? So going back to movement over here, here's what we're looking at. And 
then I need to have a string that will return the type of movement that's being done. So I'm just gonna copy this guy over. And now I'm gonna implement him in Penguin. All right. And I'm just gonna put this in a comment. Let's suppose I had like the body of movement right there. All right, that works. But now there's something else you can also do. Take a look. Right here with swimming, I can say that swimming is a type of movement. So public interface swimming can actually extend movement. All right, so now I have a sub classification of movement. All right. Now, in my classes, I'm supposed to implement. Okay, I got to mute somebody. Who's who's all the? Who has people in the background? Somebody's got to like. I don't know. Is that the person? I guess so. All right. Um, but as you can see here, I have an interface and extended movement. Great. So now I can combine the two together in that particular. Uh, facet. All right. But now if I go here to Penguin, you know, I have to really take care of anything that was abstract and not implemented. So moves and verify movement are still going to be there. Um, however, here's what I can say. I can come here. And I can make a default method. If it swims, it has to move. Do you get that? If it swims, it has to move. Who gets it? Who doesn't? Two people get it. I mean, swimming is a form of movement. So here goes. So I'm going to come down here. And I'm just going to then create public, all right? But notice what I'm gonna do. I'm going to now create public default, public default Boolean, uh, let's see, or public default string moves, all right? And Let's see, I don't have a Boolean there. Okay, but I'll just, you know, use the word moves. So I was right down. Here somewhere. All right. Can't believe I lost the line I was on, um, but no problem. So public default string moves. All right, and what I'm gonna put here is as follows. So this is gonna return uh, swims, return, and I'm just gonna say swims. All right, so, so that, that, that works. Um, and this is how you create a default function. Let me look at the chat box. This is how you create a default function. All right, cool. People are saying, got it. Awesome. And so here's what I'm going to say in closing. So extending from another interface can allow us to um, I guess you could say aggregate the behaviors that are held in common or that are, are um, 
bearing similarities. All right. And I also have to go and take a look at how I'm going to handle the other one, public string verify movement. All right. So public string verify movement. What it's going to do is as follows. Let's see, where is my penguin class? And let me just compare that to my swimming class. I'm gonna put it verify movement in here. So public default verify movement, because I know that if I'm in swimming, I'm sorry, if I'm in my swimming interface that swimming should be the answer. And this should be a string by the way. Okay. Okay, so let's just take a look at what I have here. They're saying the following. I'm gonna return. And what I should have put in here was the string, right? So in this case here, I know that the string should be uh, swimming. So here's how I'm gonna handle that. I'm gonna take in my string here. And I'm going to say the following. If S, if that's the same as swims, I think I want to put swims as, as a lower case, then the following. Don't. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let me let me uh pause for a minute and field a question. What's going on? I thought you can't do equals with a string. Don't you have to do s dot equals or s dot equals ignore case? Uh, let's see. I remember learning. I, I mean, yeah, I know. Like with the string. Well, hold on. Let's just take a look. Um, they should be giving me an error if that's true, though. Um, well, let me just. I don't think it's an error. I think like just the way it compares and everything, just like it could get messed up there. Yeah, there, there, there were like different functions like value of. Um, so let's see. S dot equals or S dot equals ignore case equals keep like checks if the case is the same. Ignore case will not care what your. Uh... I mean, another thing they say might think it's like an array. Um, no, it would have to be let's no, see. No, it knows S is a string, so it, these are All right. But let's just take a look. Um, what do we get to have in our API? So, this part here is what you're probably talking about. Yeah, or, um, or, 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 let's see, yeah, I guess so. Um they should have caught me for this part if that were true. Um, you know what? Let's just see what they're saying. That's odd. They're not catching it at all. Um, it gives an error, I think, just because it still like does an operation of some sorts. I just yeah. don't think it gives you the answer you want. Yeah. Uh, 
Hmm. So why I would they learning something like that? Like last semester, Professor yeah. Langsam said, Professor Langsam said if you're if you're comparing strings, it's better to do s dot equals instead of uh. Yeah, well, and the thing is that the, the reason why is because the objects have a separate API, but they should have flagged something. Um, and it is true that in certain cases, you may even have to go so far as to, um, as to, you know, like cast it a second time. Um, So let's let's suppose let's just see what happens because uh, I I think this would be interesting. Else, else return error. Let's see what they do. That's odd that they're not flagging it. Um, very odd. So let's just let's let's see why they're not doing that. And so they're they're behaving as if it is as if it is actually just perfectly fine. Uh, let's see what happens when I when I uh, compile and build the whole thing. Because I, I believe it still works. That's why it just, like the code will run, just the operation will do something else. Like the but in, cer yeah, in certain cases, however, they're actually supposed to, you know, like stop you. Um, errors exist, let's see. That's a mm. thing. Penguin, 13. Oh, that's, okay, let's just, let me just do that thing. Um, I believe that takes care of the error. Let's see what happens now. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I know what you're talking about and yeah, you're right. Um, but I think it's kind of awkward that they didn't flag that. And I know that if it were something like say, um, maybe like an array of values or like a different object, they definitely would have caught it and really have, you know, given me a hassle for it. But uh, let's You're see. So true. Never used it in that code though. Like nothing, nothing uh, went through this if statement in the code that you just ran. That's true. Uh, let's see. So public default string, what do I want to do? Um, I'm going to print out moves. This one. Okay, so let's see if I print out moves. All right, so P1 dot. It's gonna be swims. All right, let's see what happens. But I should probably tell you that simply getting away with it doesn't mean that it's automatically correct, so. Um, a penguin swims, true. Yeah, it, it printed it out because it's a penguin, then you, you displayed swims and then it said true. So it did it didn't work. Which is... Right, it didn't I, I didn't get destroyed for it. Um which is Obviously, interesting. Yeah, but you know what? 
it, it is a good idea to keep that in mind, though. Um, because you know, sometimes these things get awkward on you. Um, th that's like there's more than one class per string on top of that. There's the Java Lang, and then there's an uh, a second one. So yeah, it gets kind of awkward, and there are things that might need some tying up around the old loose ends, but uh, I'll definitely be making that distinction later on when we talk about, uh, you know, input and output, because I know that for writing and reading, that type of thing would come into play big time. Uh, also, my, uh, my penguin class, uh -huh. um, it gives me an error. It says, it says the penguin must implement the inherited abstract method movement.moves and movement.verify movement. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because if you were following what I did, I went into swimming and I put default methods there. I did that also. And I still have the same thing. Seriously? Do you want to do a screen share? I mean, I'm surprised, but. Um, hold on. I mean, you don't have to say yes, but if you want to, let's take Maybe a look. Want to save it. Oh, yep, it went away once I saved it. Oh boy, I'm supposed to know to do that. Yeah, I always okay. use the um, I always use the hotkeys command yeah, F. I, I I just forgot to click it last time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Um. So that is today. All right, guys. So. The homework, I'll take it on, or the assignment, I'll take it on Friday, all right? But don't hand it to me 12.01 Saturday morning because that makes it tough because there's always going to be somebody who asks, what happens if they hand it in a minute after? Should they get credit? And then the five minute after, then there's a half hour, then an hour, then the next morning. And then after the end of the weekend, I've been down this road so many times before. So if you're not done by 10 p.m., you should probably have uh, started way sooner. Um, that's just my rule of thumb.